They are trying to stop any method where you're making money on a property you don't yet own. That's the end game. The end game is if it's an ovation, a double close, an assignment. If you're trying to monetize something you don't yet own, eventually they're going to stop that. And by the way, regulation isn't going to be just limited to wholesaling. We're seeing it already come into flipping. California passed the law now where you cannot flip a house unless every contractor is licensed and documented and they're giving a lot of rights to a buyer on a property that was done by a flipper. You know, I don't have a lot of problem with that one. Like, yeah, you should be doing competent work. You should be hiring competent labor. It's just overreach, right? It's the government coming in and saying, we're going to now control this. We're going to now put restrictions on this. We're going to now put requirements on this. And what they're doing is they're just meddling now into the, into the flipping world. Wholesaling, though, where they're going to try to stop that is they're going to get smarter. Right now, they're not very smart about how they're writing these laws because they don't understand what we do. They're getting smarter and they're going to figure out, hey, really what, we're, what we need to do is we need to write this law to where they can't do it if they don't own the property. And that's what we're starting to see. Like if you look at Pennsylvania- We have to buy properties. We have to buy properties. You have to, the, okay. The bottom line is this, you got to buy the freaking thing. Yeah. Once you buy it and you own it and you take title, now you can turn around and do whatever you want. We don't want you pre-marketing something you don't own. That's a double close. We don't want you assigning something you don't own. That's, that's an assignment. We don't like that. We don't want you doing an ovation. All an ovation is, is it's a workaround to capitalizing and buying the property. You're trying to resell it for more without actually buying it. That's what a novation is. They don't like those models because here's why. They feel like the seller's getting ripped yeah. off. They feel like you're stealing equity. They feel like you're predatory. They feel like you're misleading. They feel like you're misrepresenting. They feel like all these things are happening. And they feel like with a buyer, you actually can't convey title on something you don't own. So you're telling a buyer, hey, I'll sell this to you for X, but I actually don't know if I can because I don't know if I can convey title because I actually don't own the property yet. So mm -hmm. it's a problem all around doing this strategy yeah. and it's a multi-billion dollar industry and they're coming in our pockets and they're not going to let it sit. They're not going to let it keep happening the way it's been happening. Now, this may take a long time because who knows how quickly so far they're saying, Hey, we want to, we want you licensed. All the licensing does is it brings it under the jurisdiction of the real estate commission. That's step one is bring it under their control. Once it's under their control, now they can start to change the laws and say, well, we don't like you doing this. We don't want you doing that because now it's a brokering thing. It's you were considering wholesaling brokering and you're under our control now. So we can tell you how to do it, what to do, when to do it, how much you can do it, all that. So people think like, oh, just go get your license. No big deal. Well, yeah, for today, but that's not the bigger picture. Look at the narrative. Look at the language. Look at the perception. The perception is wholesaling is predatory. Yeah. It's harmful to sellers. It's ripping them off. You're a bad guy. You're kicking grandma out of the house. It's all wrong. Like that's not actually what's going on, but that's the perception. And that's the angle that they're taking. They're gaining ground on that, right? Like they're winning the fight. For one, we can't even organize whatsoever to even have a say in any of this. You know, we're a bunch of cowboys out here and we want to stay cowboys in a world that's regulating. We want to be cowboys, right? So we're like, Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to do whatever I want because I have an equitable interest in a contract. That's fine until they say, nah, we don't see it that way. And then I even have people tell me right now, well, they can't make me do that. I'm protected by the Constitution. Well, maybe, but you got to go through due process. You got to you got to fight these laws. Two years of law. Who's going to be the guinea pig that's going to spend yeah. hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars in, in legal fees to fight these laws? Yeah, that's right. The one saying that's definitely not going to do it. They're not going to step up and take one for the team, who's going to take one for the team and do that, right? And undo these laws. Somebody has to, and maybe in time somebody will, but until then they're going to fine you. They have the control now. If you guys want to really think about long-term, how do I position myself to be in this business for the long haul? Keep doing the assignment as long as you can when it's appropriate, but you better start building other exit strategies. The biggest thing to learn is how to raise money. Yeah, you know, how do I buy it, then resell it? How do I buy it, then renovate it? How do I get away from anything that is other than I'm the buyer and I'm going to buy it and I'm going to close on it and I'm not going to do any funny business until I own it. Once I own it, I'm going to do whatever I want until that point when I actually buy it. That's all we're doing here. And that's the language you have with sellers and agents and everybody is I'm the buyer and I'm going to close and own it before 
remarketing to anybody else. A private money lending is going to become huge. A capital yeah, is going exactly. to become huge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it already is. Like if I talk to all the wholesalers that I know that are active, legit, running full operations, most of them, most of them are already doing this. They're definitely doing a significant part of their business is buying the property. And a significant part of their business is getting capitalized. It's flipping, it's it's a takedown method or wholetailing, right? They may not talk about it. It's a big part of their business already. And why would it not be? Because the, yeah. the assignment of contract is only one method and it's the lowest paying method of all of them. It's awesome because there's a low barrier to entry. You don't take as much risk. You don't actually ever own the property. It's awesome. It's the most genius, low risk strategy in real estate. But that doesn't mean it's the best strategy. It doesn't mean it gives you the highest return. It doesn't mean it applies in every situation. And so there's certainly a world where everybody needs to be thinking about the assignment method, even a double close, as just a tool in the toolbox. And how do I have all the tools so that I can get the right exit for the right situation and the right deal? That's how we really should look at the business. Here's what I tell people. Do what you can with where you're at. So like, yeah. for example... Sometimes I'll make an offer with like an agent and I'll say, hey, I'll waive inspection and I'll put a $10,000 non-refundable earnest money. And people will say to me, well, I can't do that. Well, I know you can't do that. I couldn't always do it either. Yeah. So do what you can. And then That's when you can do more, you do more, right? Like wherever you're at in the journey is where you're at in the journey. The only way to get to a new place in the journey is do where, where what you can, where you're at as best you can. Reinvest when you do deals back into the business. Because this is all developmental. Everything here is developmental, meaning it's just building on itself. You build on where you're at. And you, and then when you get to the next step, you build on that step and you build on next next step. You know, that's why like the, the worst thing that can happen in this industry is you get shiny object syndrome and you're chasing this and you're over there doing subject two and you're over here doing this and you're over here trying to, and then next thing you know is you're trying to do 20 things not good at all rather than do one thing really good, get that dialed in, get it consistent, get it working, and then introduce something new. It's part of the silver lining here that since it's changing and the industry is changing, I mean, it's like, it's going to scare people off and there'll be more opportunities. Is there? Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. Because here's the thing. What this is doing is it's creating some friction in the industry. Whenever there's friction, it means all the something for nothings, all the fly-by nights, all the get rich quick, they all go away. Now, those people have no business being here anyway, because they're not going to see it through to the finish line anyway, right? So what they're doing is they're running around, they're, they're over contracting, they're, they're, they're the ones that are causing some harm in the industry. Some of it's naive, like they just don't know any better. And some of it's intentional, because it's just like, you know, how do I get something for nothing? I don't want to sacrifice anything. I don't want to invest anything. I don't want to take any risk. I just want to make all this money without without any risk, right? Like that type of person, as soon as they see a little bit of friction, like getting a license, like having to raise some money, double close, whatever, then they leave. So for those of us that actually are here for the right reasons, we're looking to build a business, we're willing to put in the work, we're willing to take a risk, we're willing to step up to the game, we're willing to do a thousand phone calls like that. That individual, which is all of you, I mean, you've all shown that because you've invested in advanced coaching, right? A mentor program. They're going to have more opportunity. I think right now, Tyler, to answer that question, like if you look at South Carolina, which has aggressive regulation, if you look at Pennsylvania, which has aggressive regulation, the smartest thing you could do would be to set up shop in that market. Like I, I know we've got John Dunn. He's in South Carolina. The smartest thing John could do right now is not to leave South Carolina because there's regulation, but to stay in South Carolina and adapt because everyone else that is in the way right now are going to leave because of the friction point. Now, the early implementers are the ones that always make the most money. They're always the ones that rise to the top. They foresee changes. They foresee a shift, whether it's market or regulation, whatever, and they adapt quickly. And if you're able to adapt quickly in this business, you will always be successful. I think the number one skill that you could acquire would be to not attach to any one thing, be very flexible, and be willing to change on the fly. As things happen, as things come, interest rates change, or somebody is elected into office, a regulation passes, and you're quick to it. Unfortunately, most people, what they do is they find a model that's working, and they hang on to that model, 
and they sink with the Titanic as it's going down because it's like, no, we're going to hang on to this dying model just because it's what worked yesterday. And like, I have a conversation with my team all the time that says, hey, whatever we're doing today, we're not going to be doing tomorrow because it's probably not going to work tomorrow because something's going to change the game. A lot of it's technology. AI is changing the game, how we do things. All these things are going to change how we do things. So don't come into this business unless you're fully aware that whatever you're doing today that's working isn't going to work tomorrow. And you're going to have to adjust tomorrow. Now, when I say tomorrow, you know, maybe it's not tomorrow. Hopefully it's not tomorrow, but in the future, but and you're quick to see that and you're quick to adjust. And that's how you continue to thrive. The people I know that make the most money in real estate are the ones that are quick to adapt to changes. And this is nothing more than that. All this regulation. I don't look at it like doom and gloom. I look at it like a massive opportunity if we're willing to change. And what I'm doing is I'm just bringing awareness to you about it. Now I get a lot of heat for it. A lot of people give me, give me heat where they're like, oh, you're fear mongering or you have some kind of hidden agenda or whatever. And I'm like, look, I'm just adapting and I'm telling you how I'm seeing it. And I'm telling you what I'm doing to adapt and you can come along with me or you can keep doing what you're doing. I really don't care. I feel an obligation to bring awareness to what's happening and then you do what you want to do with it. I don't care. With this takedown idea where you buy it, resell it, I'm really big on that. It's how I'm transitioning most of our deals right now or it's not all of it because we still, we're still doing the assignment every single day, but I'm heavily looking at, should I take it down and then resell it? Or should we just take the assignment and move on? Now, part of the reason why I'm doing that is because if I'm forced to, meaning I don't have an option anymore to do the assignment, I want to be ready to take it down. I want to have that process dialed in. I want to have the capital ready. So part of it is getting ready, just constantly getting ready. And the other part of it is, well, does it make way more sense anyway to take it down and resell it? Can I make two to four times more doing that? Even if I don't have to take it down because I can still do the assignment if I want to in my market, in my state, but I want that option and I want to be set up for that well. That's a big priority for me right now is getting set up for that well and also bringing that to you. So right now I've got funding in place. If any of you want to do a takedown, you know, reach out to me, let me know. I will line you up with my funding source. I just don't have it right now um, at the at the affordability that I want it to be at. It's expensive. It still makes sense, probably, like it's still worth it. The big thing about capital, and if you can take this away, if you can adopt this mindset, it's not about the cost of capital, it's about the access to capital that matters the most. Meaning, if I can do a deal and I can pay 20000 in financing, but I can make 20000 and I know the money's there and available and ready, and I can get the deal done, and I make forty, and I pay twenty. Well, I could have I could have made fifty if I only paid ten. So I could have made more money if I had better capital, and I always work on that. But my point is, it's not that it cost me twenty; it's that I was able to do the deal and make forty. That's more important to me. Is it there? Is it available? Is it ready? Can I count on it? Is it going to be there on the day of closing? More than well, how much does it cost? Ah, well, if I could save. $5,000 or $20,000 is too expensive. I'm not going to do it. I'd rather borrow the expensive money, get the deal done and make 40, than stay at home, sit at home and not do a deal and not make anything. Like that's how we got to look at it. It's not about the cost. It's about the access. Once you have the access to the capital, okay, fine. Work on affordability, work on cost, work on, I'm always doing that. No matter what, I'm, I'm trying to raise cheaper money. If I'm paying 4% money, I want to pay 3% money. Like always. <laughs> But how do I get the money for my deals? How can I make it accessible so that I can adjust and keep going and keep doing the business? That's the priority.